second episode of Beyond the Workstation. When I think about today's guest, I'm almost speechless. Being an overachiever himself, he brings with him a legacy of excellence. His father held a prominent position at ISRO and his circle includes illustrious friends like Narayan Murthy. Well, what are we waiting for? Let's hear from Dr. Subramanya Murthy, the Chief Strategy Officer and Board Member at Infogen Labs. Very good morning, Subhu, and Namaste from India. Very good morning and Namaste from United States of America. So let me first welcome you for our second episode of uh, Beyond the Workstation podcast, which is powered by Infogen Labs. So we are super excited to have you over here. And I have a lot of topics to chat with you around. So without wasting further time, I might want to directly jump yeah. on the topics if you are all okay with it. I'm fine. And it's a pleasure to be here because I love the people at InfoChan. I love the culture that InfoChan has put together. So it's a pleasure for me. Okay. Awesome. That's great to know. So, uh, Subhu, we are very keen to know about your life journey uh, through your own words itself. So, and, you know, I always say this because we come from the Indian culture. Everybody's life journey has a component of Mahabharata in it. It's hard not to have the pluses and minuses. But from the personal story, it has been always one of simplicity and I've been blessed with good friends, including the founder of Infogen, Sanjeev, and I know for decades now, and have led a very simple life, not hurting others. So my personal, so my philosophies are very simple. Keep to yourself, but I respect others and do not hurt others. So it's been on the personal side. And that wow. and on the social side, my dad was a very big philanthropist. Uh, he was uh, one on the board of governing council of ISRO and uh, in, in Indian Institute of Science. He brought a lot of things to the table in life without asking anything for himself, which was a great role model for me in my growing up life. And I was blessed to have, uh, as I said, a good school. I went to I went to a school called National High School, which was attended by none other than blessed by Mahatma Gandhi in his time at come mm -hmm. to school. And Mount Mountbatten, when he created the movie Gandhi, had come to our school when I was actually in high school. And I didn't realize that the movie would be produced in 1980 when I was in US. So I went from high school to college. And from college, I went to a local engineering college. And that college has produced many good people, including founders of big institutes in Silicon Valley. And as I went through the college, I graduated at a young age of 20. I came to US to do my master's. And from then, for the last, from the 70s, I've been in US. I became mm -hmm. a programmer. I was in flight control systems, wrote software that flew planes, and moved into uh, the defense industry, where I was working on missiles, and then I got a break to go to Jet Propulsion Lab in my career. Jet Propulsion Lab was a very big place because they talked not only about technology, but the R&D behind technology. And I was involved with the team that actually built the first database and that became eventually Oracle. And then I was involved with the team that was doing libraries, which became the .NET platform with Microsoft. The core. So JPL produced a lot of new things. In fact, the whole notion of database well, from COTS database was created when they were looking at a thing called Voyager that still is flying by the by. And so, and so JPL was affiliated with Caltech, was very research centric. So I spent about eight years there and that was very helpful in my growth uh, as an individual. And I moved on from JPL to a small institute company. And that's where I actually met Sanjeev. In fact, Sanjeev and I designed the first version of Java scripting language. And you may not know this, but Sanjeev actually wrote the code. And I was designing the specs for testing, which reshaped how testing was done in the early 90s in the medical industry. 
and uh, that company sold and was doing well. I was just an employee of the company. And uh, so from that journey started, I started my own company STEM and I got into Y2K. That was very successful. I met very good people. Even today, I'm very good friends with Narayan Murthy and all. I met a lot of them. They've still remained friends. Um, and, uh, and also at the same token, I started seeing progress of Sanjeev as well. Sanjeev was doing very well in his career. So as I was building my career in engineering, I felt I should move to a non-engineering discipline. So I became a chief information officer. And in the, as a chief information officer now, I was a buyer of technology, not a builder of technology. It gave me a different mm. perspective. Yeah. And, you know, So far, I'd only been thinking about technology and its excellence. But as a buyer, I started thinking about value and judgment, which was important. And from that, I started uh, small you know, companies and then uh, uh, you know, we work with Infogen now, we have a product side as well. So the journey has been very good. Just learning is, you never can stop learning in this field. And interestingly, the education field in parallel, I worked on a PhD. So I got my master's and a PhD while all the career was going on, the education field. But the more you read, the less you know. You feel you there's so much more. And that's the ocean that we are in. I feel like we're in an ocean. So that's my journey. And in all crosses, personal, social, and, and professional, I simply feel I'm just a visitor on a small island called Subu in the big ocean that we live. It's the journey. Wow. I mean, I'm still absorbing all. Uh, it's awesome, I mean. Uh, did I go too fast or did I... <laughs> No, no, it was awesome. I mean, it, you know, uh, it's uh, I've been listening about you from the colleagues and I've been willing to meet you or have an interaction. And today I'm getting and then knowing a bit more about you. And it's not a bit, but it's so much. And as you started, you said about your personal, your professional and social life. It's very interesting. I mean, I'm sure... Uh, uh, we are lucky enough to have you as in part of Infogen and getting chance to work with you. So, it's my pleasure, really. As I said, there is so much to learn and the journey, journey continues. True. And I think what Infogen under you, Sanjeev and all has set up is that learning capability. I see that. I see that enthusiasm and that's very encouraging to me. Yeah. You mentioned about Mahabharata. I'll be coming on that point because that's something which is my favorite, personal favorite uh, side as well. It has changed my life a lot. But before that, I'm keen to know like four decades or plus you're in this industry. Not a short span at all, I'm sure. Yes. Right? Uh, and uh, we being just a decade or plus in this industry, we are on plans of retirement and all. But working for more than four decades, I'm curious to know like how you keep up with this changing culture, trend, technology. I mean, what's your secret? One, I know it's learning is all that you believe in. But how you manage with it with this demanding profession of an IT? It's a very good question. I mean, you know, there are th you know, many techniques. For example, some people believe in deep diving into learning books and they mm -hmm. constantly spend time. And today with, with the opening of chat GPT, with the opening from Google to chat GPT to Bard and all, there's so many sources of learning. And But we don't have to go that far. If we look at our own culture, if you want to study, there are so many books, especially depending, independent of which philosophy you follow, it doesn't matter. There's books, then there is what is called preachings and commentaries. And there's a third method, which I tend to, because I'm, uh, is listening, shramanam, as they say. Yeah. And I tend to talk a lot, which is also good, but hidden behind that is the ability to listen. And I think it's, in, you know, it's in an ocean, you can't see everything. And you have to accept that. But you tend to build expertise in some areas where you can share. 
So you learn so that you don't, you can share. If you take that view, like you become a teacher, a teacher is that's applied to me, one of the noblest professions that can be because you learn to share, okay? And so if you take that attitude, you learn with interest, not with, you know, fear or suspicion or just greed. So that is important. And also to recognize that it's an ocean. You cannot learn everything. You know, if you take the field of music, uh, you know, uh, just FYI, Bhim Sen Joshi stayed with us, just to mention wow. this. And I took him to Las Vegas and I asked him, and he just kept on saying that, you know, the teacher listening, so teacher mentorship, like which, which is very critical, you get mentors in life, not one, just one mentor. So one way to be in this field and keep up, definitely you have to do some reading, but it's exhaustive. How much can you read? I mean, there's only time. And then there is practice. So you practice certain things, what you learn, which is good, but listen. And that is my become my more dominant one. So I belong to several groups. I'm on LinkedIn, I'm connected to 15,000. So if there is some things, someone else. So, so for example, I might call Sanjeev and say, Sanjeev, is AI really sentient when we discuss it? And Sanjeev brings all his wealth of expertise into the table, right? So likewise, I can call somebody, my friend Ken Venner. He was CIO at SpaceX. Sanjeev knows him well, and he's now CIO at Sierra Space. So I can ask him, what made this whole space thing so inexpensive, which was so expensive before when I was a junior? Wow. So he'll give concise answer. In fact, the answer to the question is, in the traditional models, we never took risk. Whereas mm -hmm. SpaceX, Elon Musk took risk. He said out of 100 spacecraft, I'm willing to lose 10. I said, okay. Then he brought the cost down by a factor of 10, which means it was still much cheaper than. And in JPL, yeah. we did not, our design was to be perfect. So perfection, mm -hmm. going from that 90% to 100% takes so much, right? In fact, as we see in software, you can get very quickly to the 90%, but to get it to work, that last mile takes a long sweat. This is not working, this is not working right? Yeah. So that, and similar, so what happens is if you get into that space, you can't cross all of it. So that 10%, if you start listening, you will reduce, you will, oh, really? So that learning comes from studying, practicing, and listening. The third part, sadly, is missing. But COVID happened. See, people started working from home. Well, there is some productivity gain because you can do many things. But they also miss that coffee talk. You know, you'll be at a coffee, taking a coffee and people will be chatting. Hey, how did you do this? You miss yeah. that. You miss True. those. So that, I think, listening to people. And I have not stopped that. And today, most of my learning comes from listening to scholars and today, with all the technology, you you know, you have podcast of a very simple person, but there are very big people who provide podcasts. You can listen to them, learn from them. Okay? Yeah. Sure. That's, that's But the key to this is you select, select scholars. So that yeah. is the key. Yeah, true. Right. Yeah. right. See, and that's one of the reasons why this, these things are good. I believe Sanjeev also did a podcast. Okay. And yes. Those provide actually all, as though you're face to face. You can't be face to face with all the intelligent people, but this provides a mechanism for us. So if I have to, I rarely advise people, but I say that learning from this man is a very underrated skill. Most people believe in the traditional textbook, read, exam, right. practice, sure. but listening is a very powerful thing. I totally agree with this. I mean, uh, I uh, we see a lot of people listen to respond. Yes. Uh, right? I mean, uh, it's one is to react, one is to respond. Yeah. And that's where actually listening is all about, right? Exactly. How much you listen, understand, and then how you respond to it. Exactly, exactly, exactly. I, uh, I mean, I completely agree. Listening is also one of the key factors. Yes. Awesome. So uh, the next point that I want to discuss with you, right, because it happens very easily in today's time with everyone. I mean, 
um, no doubt of putting any specific generation also. Anything goes well, anything is happening best, someone gets overwhelmed. If things are not falling in place, they may get disappointed. Same thing must have happened with you also, I'm sure, because as in the start, you also mentioned like...